Hey guys, welcome back to another video in the series of DevOps interview questions in Python or Python interview question in DevOps. So today is the second day that you already know that we are going to discuss two problems almost every day. And then today we are going to talk about two things that you can see on my screen. So the first thing is Fibonacci series. A lot of people call it Fibonacci. It's fine. A lot of people call it Fibonacci. And then the first thing that we are going to take a look is the iterative method. It's a very basic thing. We won't create any function and just do the iterative way. The second one is Fibonacci through recursion. So a lot of people call it recursion. A lot of people call it recursion. It's, it's fine. You can call it anything. And then we are going to discuss that. All right. So in the recursion, we are going to talk about the concept first, like what exactly is recursion and why do we need it? And then we're going to talk about it. All right. So if you're new over here, uh, I'd like to request that if you have not subscribed my channel yet, kindly do so. So without further ado, let's dive right into the video. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to discuss today is what is a Fibonacci series? Okay, so let me just write it down. Now, consider a series that starts from 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, and so on and so forth. Okay, so what is happening over here? We just add the first two numbers and then present it as the next digit here we are going to add one and one and then present it as the next digit similarly over here adding one and two is the next digit. so whatever is the next number is an addition of the previous two numbers all right so this is the index and these are the numbers so one and two plus three similarly three and five would equal would be equal to 8 and if you want to guess the next number you can just add 5 and 8 so if you add 5 and 8 it will come out be 13 all right so the next number would be 13 so that's how you represent a Fibonacci series all right so these are the index through uh, when you go in in this way these are these these are the index now let us understand what exactly is recursion so the process in which a function calls itself directly or indirectly is called recursion and the corresponding function is called as recursive function so using recursive algorithm certain problems can be solved quite easily all right so let's say if there is a function okay so how do you define function over here is def and your function name so whenever you call a function you just call it from somewhere else but have you ever seen a function calling itself so whenever a function of the same name obviously calls itself is known as recursive function and we are going to take example for that today so do not get confused and let's dive right into the demo part okay so if you can see on my screen this is the series that we talked about it starts from zero and then one and then one and then two the addition of first two terms and then one plus two equal to three and so on and so forth do not get confused in some scenarios the zero is not present so that's fine so if that's present, then just take a first number equal to zero. Otherwise, you can just avoid it. All right. So let us understand the iterative method of doing it. It is one of the very famous question that can be asked if, even if you are a fresher or you go for a dev or a DevOps interview, this can be asked. All right. So let us understand it. So the first thing is what we are doing is we're taking an input from the user that enter the index till you want the series. So you want the series at to some point, right, at to some index. So you are inputting that. So we are going to input it from here when we run the program. Let me just uh, take it this way so it's better for you to understand. The first number is 0 that we are going to take and the second number is 1. So these are the numbers that we are going to take as by default. And then we, we are going to take a temporary vari variable by using which we will do the stuff. All right. So I will just print the first number over here and then the calculation will be done by using this temp variable. And then just first number, second number just and nothing nothing else just you have to print that and then run a loop so this loop runs from for i in range from 0 till index so this index is coming from where coming from here which we will give as a input value and then in temp what we are going to do we are going to take the first number and the second number so we are going to add these number as of now and then in the first number we are going to take the value of second number because we have to shift it and then in the second number we will give the temp why temp? Because temp is the addition of first number and second number and then we are going to print the temp. And that's what we have to do because the first number and the second number has to have a sum and that will decide the next value which is any value like. So if 0 is present in first number and 1 is present in second number, the temp which we are going to print 
should be 1. All right. And let's talk about this scenario 5 and 8. So we are shifting the values one by one in these three lines. Now, if first number has a value of 2 and second number has a value of 3, it will add and add it to temp and then we are going to print temp which is 8. All right. So this is how we are going to do for 3, 5, 8, for 5, 8, it's 13 and so on and so forth. So let's just run this program and understand if it's running fine or not. So 0, 1, Fibonacci iterative, enter the index. So you can count the index so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So there are around 9 to 10 values. So let us see what happens till 8. So you can see it has presented all these values. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. How come 10? Because we have printed these two values separately which is over here. So do not get confused. It has presented 8 values only. Alright. So if you want to run it again and take a smaller look, look at the smaller value, you can give 6 or 5 over here. And you can see these two are presented because we have printed it and rest 5 values. So 1, 2, 3, 5 and 8. This is a sum 8, this is a sum 8 and so on and so forth. So this is a very basic idea of how a Fibonacci series works in an iterative way. Alright, you can create a definition def or a function out of it and then you can make a call to it. But this is just one way of doing it. It is very simple and if an interviewer expect let, let's say if an interviewer asks you, okay, so I don't want to do it like this, let's create a function out of it. So just create a def out of it and then Define your function over there and write the same step and just make a call from somewhere else as a driver code. So you will be able to run it. So I hope you guys have understood it. Let's dive right into the second part, which is the recursive function. Let's let me expand it so that you can see clearly. Clear the screen and do not get confused. I have running CMD over here. You can run anything partial, git bash, anything. I'm running command prompt. All right. So let me just expand it. Perfect. So this is clear. So I'll be running the second program, which is 0, 2. I'm not going to hit enter over here right now. Just going to explain it. So the program starting is from here in which index is the value, which is again, I'm taking that enter the index till you want the series. So this is I'm taking from the input as a user. So it is calculating if index is less than or equal to zero, it's going to prompt with please add a positive number. Why? Because we want to go in forward direction, not not in the not in the negative direction and that's not how a series Fibonacci series works. All right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to run a negative scenario for you first. So let's say my value I give minus two. It will say, please add a positive number because that what we expect. Again, let's run for zero. It will again say, please add a positive number. So you have covered a case over here, a test case kind of that entry should not be a negative number or a zero value. All right. So this is one thing. Now the real program starts in L scenario, what it will do, it will run the program from whatever from from zero till whatever index that we give. So if we give five over here, let's see what happens. So what is going to do, it's going to call the function Fibonacci by i and i is the value that is going to come over here. It will go over here for the first two scenarios when the value runs from zero till one, it will check, it will return zero and then print zero for the next iteration, it will print one and then why because i would be equal to one right so zero and one would be printed in the same scenario in in different scenarios like for zero it would be zero for one it would be one and then as soon as the value becomes two so what would it will do so index will go for two minus places which is this so at index two it will take this value and then at index minus one it will take this value it is going to add both of these values and then present a then return an addition of those two values, which is two. And again, when it becomes the value three, what happens? It will go over here. It will go. Is it is it fulfilling the condition? No. Is it fulfilling the, fulfilling the condition? No. It will go over here. Fibonacci. The function is going to call itself. So this is where recursion is happening. So function is calling itself. So you can see that we are returning the value, but the function is written inside a function and is calling itself itself. And that's what is a recursive function. And this phenomena is known as recursion or recursion. All right. So as soon as it became three, so three minus two is one. So it will search for index one and then it is it will search for three minus one index two. So what will what it will do? It will pick the value one plus one will give two and so on and so forth till we give the values. 
so let us run the positive scenario over here and then i'll want it till 10 okay so what it will do it will print the 10 values so if you want to count it you can count it 0 1 2 sorry 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so this is going to count it i hope you have understood this so if we give 10 over here and one by one it ran for it the function called itself until and unless the condition is fulfilled and then once it's ended it's going to return the values and it is going to print it one by one all right so this is my driver code this is where i make the main call once i made this call it will go over here and then it will fulfill the scenario for the first two condition which is zero and one and after that your program will run by calling itself sorry your function will run by calling itself and that's the thing that you need to understand so i hope you guys have understood this part because this is very important and very basic thing to learn inside uh, inside any any sort of programming and whenever you go for dev or devops interview they might ask you this question so you need to understand it so uh, if there is anything feel free to comment below and we will address that so thanks guys and i'll see you in the next one